Wake up, wake up to Bill Flynn in the morning. Welcome to the Love Your Lawn Hour. And our friends at Growing Green are joining us this morning. You got, you were just telling me, and Tommy Coward joins us this morning. Uh, Tommy is the resident agronomist at uh, Growing Green. That's true. Now, what does a resident agronomist do? I uh, kind of design the program, see, oversee a lot of the uh, chemical that we're using. On mm-hmm. the plants. Help ID issues on the lawns. I get calls. We have nine full-time well technicians that are out doing the treatments. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they'll see weird stuff all the time, as I do. So Okay, the cool they, thing, they'll call you and say, I've never seen this yeah, before. What is, what is this? this? You know, we got to. And you got to have the answer. Yeah. And thanks to the Internet, thanks to a lot of experience in this. Well, 30-some 30, 30 30 years you've been doing this now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Long time. North Carolina State University, you were involved with their program over there? For got a, a master's degree from state and turf. Um, mm-hmm. And that's where I met Jonathan Rigsby, who owns Growing Green. And that was about twenty over twenty years ago. That's so a remarkable, back, but. that's a friendship, and that's a business, a relationship, and it, it's an enduring one on both sides. It is. It's a passion we both share for the turf industry. You know, I mean, both of us were. I was always, you know, my father was an agronomist for Sibagagi Corporation, which is now Syngenta. You mm-hmm. might see them out on I forty. Sure. Big, um, you know, multinational company, mm-hmm. chemicals. And, you know, as growing up, I spent a lot of time on corn fields, soybean fields, uh, you know, just with my dad. On oh, really? So you had a real feel, understanding, you actually played with the plants, tore them up, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, growing yeah. up on a little mini farm in Guilford County, we had mm-hmm. a big vegetable garden, and he was a real avid gardener and taught us all how to garden. And we, uh, you know, that was our summer job, the five kids in the family, we'd raise a bunch of sweet corn. Mm, yeah. And, you know, tomatoes, cucumbers have fights with tomatoes, you know. <laughs> a lot of that stuff didn't go to waste. If it didn't get sold at this little roadside it stand. It became ammunition. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, we were throwing stuff. and That yeah. reminds me, and I, and I think it's one of those things that for a lot of people, one of the most memorable experiences I have as a kid in school was, you remember the, the milk cartons? Were small and square. Yeah. You know where I'm going with oh, this. Oh, yeah. I had that experience. They gave me gravel. All right. You <laughs> cut the top of the milk carton off and you end up with a nice little square planter. Mm-hmm. You put some dirt in it and then you put your name on it and there was a seed in there. Sure. A bean. A usually. bean is what it was. Right. Yep. And and then you'd go <laughs> at the back of the class every day and check and see if yours was sprouting, you know. Yeah, and to find out if you want to pursue a career <laughs> yeah. later in life. In and it was so cool to watch the progress of that. Not for me, Bill. They always gave me gravel because, as I recall, they'd have Why sand, they... soil, and, and gravel. gravel. Okay, I got the soil. You but, yeah, did I was great. like, woohoo, I'm winning this. Yeah, I'm, I'm top. I'm t- top seed of the tournament here with soil. I remember my seed rotting away. You know, <laughs> oh, and no. you see this mold growing on it, and I'm like, "Wow, well, I guess I don't have a green thumb or whatever." And I'm like, "What's all this water?" All that challenge, though. Yeah, that, well, I overcame you, it. Then you uh, ended up doing this for a living. Now, you mentioned that you're getting a, a lot of phone calls. A lot of people are calling you. This is a seasonal kind of. The phone banks are already zipping. What are some of the questions? Some of the things you're hearing from either clients or people finding out about you, what are they What are they asking for right now? Well, a lot of times, you know, hey, why is my lawn not greened up? You know, and that's that's a, a good question. Uh, right now is a great time to go ahead and mow that lawn. And you're going to just take off a lot of this dead senest, dead growth, old, older leaf really? tissue. You is know, it important to bag that or just let it go? Just let it go. It's about rotten anyway. If you run, run over your lawn a couple of times, get mm-hmm. all the, what I call schmeckma, which is all that, you know, just debris that's laying there and it's rotting away. It's just going to disappear. Okay. If it dries out, it just pretty much disintegrates. Now, now do you want, if you, or if you're doing this, is this a, what, is this a three inch cut or a, a real low cut or where do you recommend? At this, this point, you could probably take it down to three inches. You know, we, mm-hmm. we recommend a tall fescue lawn be cut at four inches. That's mm-hmm. the optimum that's a perfect growth for tall fescue that's where it wants to be most people like hey i go three and then we have kooks out there that are half inch on tall fescue they want a golf course and it's not it's not going to work and it takes some guys some time Mm -hmm. 
especially if they like to, you know, we've got customers that mow every day. They got a riding lawnmower, they got a drink holder, and they mow. No, I never knew such a thing. Mowers. Everyday mowers. Everyday mowers. Got to have that drink holder. Got to have that mower, maybe some headphones. And they're out there mowing. Most of these are senior citizens, retired, mm-hmm. but they okay. that's, stay that's, on that's it a, every day. And uh, They got their own plot of golf course that's going to be right. Exactly. They want it perfect, uh-huh. and they're mowing it Mowing tall fist. So a, 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 about a three inch cut would be good for this first go over. Perfect. Wake it up. Get the get the dust out. Get the old growth that's died. That's uh, is starting to kind of collect on the top. Just kind of wake things up a little. It'll bit. wake it up. It's sort of like when you cut a plant or in bonsai. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're going to get back budding basically. You know, if you cut mm-hmm. the top, you're going to get some growth on the bottom. I, after you do that, I mean, are you talking a week or two before that happens, or is it within days at this time of year? When- days, usually turf response to either mowing or chemicals. You'll see mm-hmm. it in one to two days after you do it. I mean, you know, you go out and scalp your lawn during the height of the season. You mm-hmm. see it immediately, yeah. but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the next day, usually you'll start to see some greening or with, within two to three days for sure you will see it green up and start to put out a lot of new growth mm-hmm. you're moving a lot of that dead decaying material that's in the way allowing more light to penetrate the canopy of the turf oh, and then okay. it's going to start to green up you know this time of year coming into this spring north carolina really does have a real everywhere i've lived in the state uh and some it, it may be a, a week or two offset depending upon where you are in the elevations or part of the state but we do a really nice early green pop by and large don't we we do we got a spring flush that's just second and none it's it's just it's invigorating you think man i got all season i'm this is the way to start and it's looking great yep and then you get really excited about it and then Ah. it's then you end up getting stressed through the summer of course right it has its peaks mm-hmm. and valleys. It'll start to go into stress once it gets above 85 degree ambient temperature during the day, you know, and then that fescue wants to kind of, you know. But that's where that four inch cut you were talking about sure. really helps, doesn't it? You do that and you're going to end up, you know, with a much healthier turf. You're not taking as much off the top. The plant, that's its you know, optimum height. Okay, so people are saying, I want to see the green sooner, go ahead and do a... A three-inch mow, that'll wake things up and kind of get the process going. Anything else people are asking you this time of year or things they should be asking you? Over the winter, they've probably seen, you know, in some places, like we got a call from a gentleman at, right after the show last week. He's mm-hmm. got a beautiful lawn I went to take a look at, except for some areas with moss. And the moss over the winter is really thriving. I mean, it's mm-hmm. looking great. Now, he doesn't know whether he wants to keep it or not. And we were talking about right place, right plant. Hold that thought. Okay, right okay. place, right plant. And, and I want to bring that to the foreground here and how we as the homeowners can really make the right choices to keep nature happy and our expectations in line with uh, with all of that coming up. Uh, if you have a question for our lawn experts, uh, you can join us right now. Tommy Cowett is in the house with Growing Green. Our phone number, 896-1980. Call now. The number is 896-1980, AM 980, The Eagle. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Here we are in St. Patrick's Day, and our guest in the studio is Growing Green. I mean, how perfect is that? And uh, Tommy Cow with Growing Green, the Love Your Lawn Hour is in progress. 896-1980. If you'd like to be part of the program this morning, we certainly would love to have you. And you guys, you know, your your name is green, your logo is green, your shirt this morning is green. It's the perfect St. Patrick's Day combination. Every day is St. Patty's Day at Growing Green. How wonderful. <laughs> you were, uh, right before the break, I wanted you to finish up the, the comment, and then we'll go to, a, we got a caller waiting to join us here. But you were talking about right plant, right place. Was that the term? What That's we're... right. That's what uh, most of the extension agents preach today and Mm -hmm. after years and years of experimental and failure and experiment and failure you know you gotta come to to grips with the fact Mm -hmm. that plants have a certain environment they like to live in turf is another plant that you know it's not going to grow on a you know say a maple tree well uh, people are the same way though and and i mean if you put me on a basketball court i'm not (laughs) going to be a whole lot of help to you (laughs) 
Right. But I mean, if you give me some headphones and a microphone and a great producer and a fine guest, you thrive. I got something, baby. <laughs> You're green. You're growing. But the idea that plants have a comfort zone, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Or they're, what they're designed to do yep. or be. And we can mediate that to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. You know, we can really keep some plants growing at their optimum, even in a, you know, not a less than optimum condition for the plant. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we can keep the turf. Well, that going. takes a lot of energy, doesn't it? it? Does. To do it a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of support, a lot of denying nature, a lot, isn't it? It is. It's is it it's artificial. I mean, if you're getting you know azaleas growing in full sun, and then you can do it. You can do it. That's mm-hmm. not optimum. You know, we're hostas trying to grow hostas in full sun. Nothing makes me more sad to see than burnt up hostas grown in full sun on you know a July day, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're making it. They looked good for a while, but now, you know, what's wrong with my hostas? They look all burnt up, you know? See that thing 11 million miles away? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, uh-huh. it was a beautiful plant early on. You could look at lawns the same way, you know? I mean, you could see the mm-hmm. same areas. And like I said, uh, we had a gentleman call in from the show last week, wanted an estimate, wanted to know why he had this moss growing. And in some of these areas, the moss is probably the ideal plant for these compact. I love wet a little bit of soil. moss in the right place. I have a little patio that's kind of decided it wants to be moss oh, central yeah. between the rocks. You've got yes, and all yeah, the, it's very oh, rustic yeah. already, and it it I love it. My, hey, uh, sadly, one of my dogs loves it too, and I have to make sure she doesn't <laughs> gorge herself on the available moss. But. Sure, there are moss. Farmers now. I mean, you can moss nurseries. You can buy moss. It's like, really like you bring in turf grass. Exactly. You can bring in moss. You can bring in moss, and I think we talked about it last time on the show. We're mm-hmm. trying to experiment. We don't have a program for moss per se, but mm-hmm. I've been asked about it enough times and done enough proactively to check it out. Mm-hmm. And we would take buttermilk and sulfur and spray it on these bare ground areas or on the rocks you know, or where they wanted to get moss, encourage moss. Mm-hmm. People are like, I want moss. Can you take care of my moss? And, man, we're seeing it. And in fact, I just got a call from Ellen Ashley this morning, who's a garden writer. Um, with uh, She's uh, Garden Happy is the name mm-hmm. of her business, and it's a gardening uh, business. But uh, she uh, her moss that we applied buttermilk to last fall is thriving with much more moss than she had. How great. So it's a combination of buttermilk and sulfur that moss is... We're just you're experimenting. experimenting. With I mean, that's... But you know there's good success, at least with that environment. We're getting a little bit of success. Wow. Very that's cool. not something we're necessarily focused on, but mm-hmm. it's an experiment. We have a caller if you want to... Let's grab take a, a grab call. Grab the headphones there, and I want to welcome Jonathan to the program this morning. <laughs> Uh, we're Good talking. morning, Bill. Good morning, Tom. Hey, hey, Jonathan. Jonathan, if you're on a speakerphone, you need to pick up the headset, the, change that, because we'll hear you better. So, good morning. It, just Jonathan. Uh, is that better? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I'm going to turn my radio down. Yeah, that helps, too, all of these things. Good morning. What's oh, on I'm your sorry. mind? I'm sorry. I'm actually driving to, a point, to an appointment to talk to a customer about the right place, right, right plant, right place. Right. He wants to grow Bermuda grass in the shade, and... I get to be the bearer of bad news this morning. <laughs> How are you going to break that to him without breaking the heart? Oh, just going to have to lay it out. Well, and, yeah. and and our most customers, you find people are willing and amenable once you explain. Listen, if you want Bermuda grass, here's the place to grow it. Here's where not to do it. Do Are, are people understanding that message? Because I know you've spoken it many times at Growing Green. I think people are... Um, when you come across as an an authoritative person and you give facts of why it will not grow and kind of draw that line in the sand, I think they mm-hmm. respect it a lot more than trying to say, well, we'll try it and see what happens. And and then, you know, you're, you're really managing disappointment more than you are, I would think, Tommy. I mean, you exactly. can speak to this, too. You're, you know, you're, you're not going to see the full potential right i hate to anticipate the failure but you know i mean we'll you try know. we'll try but you've had enough experience especially between the two of you you know a year or two down the road what you're going to be looking at or we've just got to keep on giving it more and more of the good stuff and 
nurturing it mm -hmm. along, you know, and it's going to cost the customer more. I mean, it's possible to keep something going, but it's not going to be optimum. Uh, Jonathan, you're, you got a full schedule. You're out running around. It looks like everybody at Growing Green is, is pulling down about, uh, I don't know, five or so extra hours a week at least, if not a day right now. Well, and that's, and that's a great thing right now. So we're, we're happy to do it. I just wanted to give you guys a call and um, make a special announcement this morning. We are officially launching a session on our website called Ask the Expert. And what this is, is if you go to our website, growinggreen.com, there's a button right on the front page that says Ask the Expert. And you can, your listeners and anybody can send a question through that link, and it will come either either to myself or Tommy. Okay, I'm on the website right now, and I'm looking at it. It says Ask the Ask Expert. It's a uh, it's a box that's uh, will actually rotating through, and you'll be able to get to it. Boom, right there. Get answers to your lawn and landscape questions. And this is this is a great great way to be able to get quick information. It's custom tailored for a specific individual, right? Sure. Exactly. Just ask us and we'll see what we can do. And okay. we, will, we will respond to you within generally a couple of hours. Wonderful. Um, Let me give that website, Jonathan, before we uh, end up on our uh, hard break here. Growinggreen.com is the website. G-R-O-W-I-N-G-R-E-E-N.com. And click on it where it says Ask the Expert, and you can get an answer within hours even. Hey, Jonathan, uh, good to hear from you. Thank you. Call now. The number is 896-1980, AM 980, The Eagle. Good morning. We continue with the uh, Loving Your Lawn Hour this morning and Growing Green. And uh, Tommy Cowett is our uh, guest this morning, agronomist. Tommy Cowett, who's been with Growing Green for a couple of decades now, I guess. Uh, John and I go back about 20 years, but I've actually been with Growing Green a little over three years. So you got this long-term relationship, this professional relationship, too. Right. Uh, so many things to be touching on. Jonathan uh, checked in with us and said there's a new feature on the website, which is called Ask the Expert. There, uh, this is the time of year where we have a lot of questions. We've weathered a pretty severe weather, uh, winter weather. And uh, one of the things that I think people maybe need to think about is you see some of the limbs on the ground now. <laughs> Uh, to get those up. But what about getting maximum sun, but also health for that plant that's, uh, you know, a you know, tree or a large shrub or something? Uh, talk to me about the best way to make sure you get the optimum amount of sunlight for that bush and the surrounding turf, right? Well, you optimize your light, number one. Uh, I just want to mm -hmm. mention David Heisig. He's one of our top technicians handling the commercial end of the business. Mm -hmm. And this guy has a pet peeve about limbs. Now, it is true. You want to limb up your trees about 15 feet to get as much light to penetrate as you can. And you can actually grow some good fescue or ryegrass underneath trees if you do that. As 15 you, feet. 15 feet. You're going right. to get about six, six hours of full sun or as much light as you can um, if you go up about 15 feet. So that's one of the secrets to, if you're having some issues of growing a good turf in your lawn yeah, and you're not thinking about it, but it may well be, if you could prune those limbs, you're not going to hurt the health of the tree at that point. Not right? at all. No. And you want to take as much of that canopy out as you can to allow for more light. And that's what I'm saying about David. Uh, that's okay. his pet peeve when he comes on a property and he's seen it work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, do it. Get uh, there's limbs, you know, and he's seen how the turf will improve, you know, over the course of a season just by doing that, and you know, night and day difference. You know, I'm calculating right now in my my yard, specifically the front yard, because I got some heavy trees in the front yard. I bet you I'm a candidate right now. I need to get the tape measure out and uh, and one of those hooks. What do you call those uh, limb saws? Like you know, a pole saw. Yeah, with a it's a. It's not a power one that I use. It's just a, actually I borrowed it from Smith Patterson, who's got one. Okay. Extension, you know, pole sure. with a corona the, with the with a hook rope saw. To, yes, yes. Yeah. Those things work so well. Oh, they're awesome. I mean, everyone should have. I go through those things. I mean, I you really wore out many of those over time. You know. Mm -hmm. That's uh, good advice and and something and it, this limbing up in fifteen feet. If you get limbs at fifteen feet and below, you're going to have a much better accessibility to the sun for the turf absolutely you need to optimize your light for turf 
for long. Now, you've just started something this season, a, uh, an ongoing series in the uh, News and Record called Romancing the Lawn. It's a couple of articles I've written for mm-hmm. the News and Record. Through Ellen Ashley, uh, Paul Senior Botanical Garden is going to be submitting articles on what they do. Ellen, she's a garden writer and a teacher. She'll be talking about what she's doing. And then a, a bunch of different um, Guilford County uh, Master Gardeners will be writing articles and all about gardening. And they have not had a garden column in the News and Record in years, and they wanted to add one. That's so. a little bit shocking. And I'm, th- I'm wondering, I don't know enough about the journal's publication schedule, if they have much in that department. I mean, there used to be a huge, you know, devoted section. Almost every major metropolitan newspaper would have a, a significant gardening You think it would? Segment. I don't know if it's been all this political stuff that's been going on the last several <laughs> years that they just thought, hey. no, politics is more important than gardening. <laughs> I'd rather have the garden more times than not. Come on, uh, I, yeah, I need a little bit of there's some good brain news. candy. I'm <laughs> sick of this there, other yeah, stuff. There's yeah. some good news in gardening, at least potentially. So what, really what are some of the, uh, pardon me, the points that are coming up in your most recent edition of this article? Well, it's all about getting back to Mother Nature and its nurture and, you know, what you can do. Like they say the number one thing we do to protect the environment as individuals is recycle. Now, recycle our trash. Mm. It's easy. It's autopilot. You just do it. You sort the stuff. You sort your paper. You sort your plastic, your cans, whatnot. And it's just a natural thing. You take out the trash Mm -hmm. for your wife. You go buy her a box of chocolates. You write her a love letter. It's all kind of the same thing. It's romantic. You're doing something to help Mother Nature, to protect the earth. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, because one of the number one things of the AR that's of a concern of people today is a Gallup poll showed it's a top thing it's not the mm-hmm. number one thing is the environment and saving the environment or well, yeah, you know, save the, protect it yeah i mean we what can we do if you want to go back you want to go back i mean genesis put adam in the book of genesis adam went to work in the garden that was his gig cool he was to tend the garden and his job was to take care of stuff that god had made awesome which is a fundamental, I think we all I still have I'm that. I feel I'm doing that, too. In our DNA, there's something still there that makes us want to do that, isn't there? Sure, and I feel like what we're doing at Growing Green is exactly that. Now that we have gone to this biological or environmentally friendly approach to lawn care. Which, and by the way, there are a lot of companies that are available for products and services. But this is one of the signature differences, I think, that you have it growing green, how much you rely on these natural solutions. Sure. You They're know, there. Working with nature rather than beating, using all your might to beat it back. Kind of exactly. Thing. I mean, there you could go. I mean, most of the insecticides that were out on the market 20 years ago are gone. I mean, the real harsh stuff. Mm-hmm. Remember chloridane for termites and, you know, diazinon and Dursban. These things are gone organophosphates these things are just gone oh, msma a huge uh this was a herbicide to take grassy weeds out of certain other grasses it's gone i mean it's not available anymore it's been taken off gotta find a replacement for it and we're finding that all along we could have been relying on more natural ways to control these mm-hmm. things and maybe it was always Pushed on us by these big multinational corporations that had the, you know, profits mm-hmm. to make. And, uh, you know, that's what was available. And that, you know, yeah, and I think now we're also, finding out there's a whole lot more to it. All, over time, you realize some of these things which were effective. You didn't know maybe the damage that was coming up with, the, you know, the groundwater or the tributaries or, you know, fish kills or whatever. Sure. that we're part of that and it's so great that growing green is on the lead we're going to take a short break and come back let me encourage you to visit the website to ask the expert a new feature at the growing green website it's g-r-o-w-i-n-g-r-e-e-n.com by the way if you are a new customer we got a, a, a great moment we're going to tell you about coming up on am 980 the eagle Call now. The number is 896-1980. AM 980, The Eagle. AM 980, The Eagle, the uh, growing green folks are joining us this morning. The uh, 
Love Your Lawn Hour. Tommy Cowett joins us this morning. We're talking about all things having to do with right now this season. And are there a couple of two, three fundamental things that you're, uh, the, the average homeowner needs to be aware of that, you know, if you take care of them right now, you're going to have a better result come later this spring, come this summer, come this fall. What are some of the things you would recommend? Well, two of the most important applications we do on the lawn are what we call rounds one and two. And that uh, this mix of beautiful organic product that we you know put together in a perfect proportion also contains some herbicides, and that controls crabgrass and all of your broadleaf weeds as well. And it greens up the lawn. It does contain an organic form of nitrogen, but it contains about thirty-two different substances that are in a very high-quality compost tea. And it is a living product. It's a living organism. And when you mm. mix all these things in the right proportion and put them on plants, uh, you are going to see a really great response. Not only that, you're also going to be preventing any weeds from coming in and tackling, you know. Or well, you've worked invading. hard to put there, and then the weed contingent comes in and says, ah, that looks good to me. Let's wipe that out. So you want to avoid that. Exactly. Now, it can the be- precision that you're talking about in order to have this mix optimized I mean, you're, a, a, a half a percent solution difference can change everything, I would think. We're talking very, very precise calculations to get these applications for North Carolina, for this part of the state, for this type of season, for the lawn in particular that you have. I mean, all of these things are calculated, aren't they? They are. Uh, we have a mad scientist on staff, Chad Culbertson, who does a great job mixing these batches of this great potion does he have an unusual laugh and us and and eyes that kind of dart around yes (laughs) and he wears a lab coat too when he's doing and long gloves (laughs) and uh no chad is awesome and he's a really good technical guy uh engineering and everything and then so you know we get this thing right and we're getting it more and more right all the time and the techs are loading up with that material going out and it is Really, I, second to none when it comes to a a concoction that you can put on your lawn. It's and I think it's important for the results that homeowners want. And what you're talking about is an is an ongoing service. It, it's not that even though that is a beautifully mixed moment and coming out and it will help. But you, this is a uh, an overtime program that really has to be attended to. And to get folks aware of the program that you recommend, I think you got a, you got the, something set up for, for less than $25. If you join this program we're talking about, mm-hmm. you can get your first application That's right. under the program. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, for new customers, all new customers that come on to a, and sign up for a program, which will happen usually on a 45-day schedule, and you're getting whatever – that lawn needs at that particular time. Right now, we're running with the pre-emergent, post-emergent herbicides. You get fertilizer, you get iron, you get calcium, sulfur, and then all these great organisms and the food stuff for them, from melaleuca to uh, kelp. You're getting uh, yucca extract, molasses, all kinds of really good. It sounds a little delicious things. for most of us over on this side, too. I mean, well, they do. <laughs> the, the, the inventor of the product uh, actually does drink it to show that it's safe enough to drink. Get out. Not kidding. Now, we're not recommending that, but it does go well, to the to the core of what you've been preaching. It you've contains been humic acid, and some people have taken humic acid-containing substances in their bellies hmm. to help remove toxins. And uh, it's a chelate. It's uh, it's wonderful stuff. I mean, it's but I, it really does underscore the idea that you are literally working with nature. Oh yeah, and living substances on both sides, the the lawn itself as well as what you're you're bringing to put on the lawn is a living substance. It's actually living. We keep it refrigerated, and uh, when it goes out, it's fresh, and uh, you know it's about the best thing you can put on your lawn. Mm. Mm. So that's a great deal. It's uh, twenty four ninety five for the first application when you sign up for the program. Let me make sure folks have that phone number. It's one eight six six lawn help one eight six six lawn help. And additionally, too, if you just have a question, you, you may not even be 
uh, signed up for the program. But if you have a question you want to ask the experts, uh, certainly while Tommy's here for the next few minutes, you can dial us up at 896-1980. But you can also go to that website, growinggreen.com, and uh, and type in your question. And this is a great resource for, for, for you to be able to communicate and, and for other homeowners to learn through Growing Green what folks in this area are experiencing, right? Sure, and I could probably see a lot of our existing customers using this too. I mean, we have some co- customers that really like uh, a lot more interaction with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, some not so much. Some are just like, hey, you guys are doing a great job. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'm good. You know, because we do check in from time to time, say, hey, how are things going? Mm-hmm. We don't leave you to no, just sign you up and set it and forget it. No, mm-hmm. it's it's an ongoing thing, relationships with our technicians and the homeowner, and that's what I'm doing. I help teach our techs more about what I know, or we look at things and we all, you know, we learn for, I will learn from my techs like David Heisig, as I mentioned, doing pruning, um, you know, about, you know, just how far this turf improved from just, you know, doing some pruning. And the, I I guess some homeowners might call it the off season, Uh, but you guys have been really busy attending seminars, finding out about the latest ways to tune products and maybe offer new products uh, that weren't available, say, a couple of years ago, right? Oh, yeah. Well, as we talked about last week, we were doing the tree injections now, Mm -hmm. and we'll continue to do that. That's a year-long thing. Um, You know, if we have a customer who's got a beautiful oak tree that they don't want to lose it, but now it's under stress, it's showing some signs. Mm -hmm. We'll go out, take a look at the tree, and try to diagnose what the issue is with the tree, and now we have a way, even the biggest... 85 foot, Mm -hmm. you know, oak tree can be treated with an injection um, for insects, disease. You know, we had a lot of people requesting gumball suppression. It's right now is the time to do that. Uh, Right here, it's a it's a key time to get your trees injected for uh, gumball suppression or acorn suppression. Uh, And as you say that, there are people that have a real fresh reminder that have just gone through Trying to get up to all those gumballs, oh yeah, which work their way pretty deep into the soil pretty quickly, and it's a mess to get those up. Thank God I don't have any gumballs, but I do, I do have some of the acorns, acorns. and uh, it does change what you can do if those acorns are are left around. And I have areas where the acorns have won. I'll be honest with you. You, <laughs> you know, ever been a, hit on the head by? Oh my gosh! Oh, man. Oh. Yes, but I think the worst are those black walnuts. If, you know, you have a black walnut tree above your deck and you hear thud, you know, all the time. Oh, well, if, if you're really tuned to it, you can actually hear it whipping through the leaves of the limbs as it's coming down. Oh. And you can gen- you can generally get a, a, an idea oh. for the velocity. <laughs> and-, and the trajectory of it. <laughs> yes. I believe that one's going to hit me in the head. Here it comes. <laughs> you kind of know. Well, Tommy, I know this is a busy time of year for, for you guys and uh, folks that would like to know more about growing green and the service area, you're... You, you cover all of Forsyth County, all of Winston-Salem, all of the extended listening area via the web as well. Sure, we're out in Rule Hall all the way up to, gosh, we're, you know, um, out, pop, you know, pop town everywhere mm-hmm. around here. I mean, Clemens, and uh, we're based out of Kernersville, and we do, of course, Guilford County as well, Alamance County, and on down to Asheboro, and, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're everywhere. We've mm-hmm. got um, nine technicians. And uh, that that are out uh, right doing now, treatments working, yep, extended hours to get everything handled in this critical window here. Oh yeah, this is, and it'll continue to go on through the year. Mm-hmm. We, you guys, in addition to knowing, of course, what's coming right now, you already know what you're going to do early summer. You already know what you're going to do late summer, early fall. These programs are already set, aren't they? These they windows are to, to maximize. Yeah. Everything's pretty much set up already for the whole year. And that's the program that uh, that we were discussing, to take advantage of of that wisdom. To deal with what is going on on the lawn, because it's constantly changing. The cast of characters, as far as weeds go, is Mm. always changing. So the program changes as far as the weeds go. But as far as the good stuff where we're building the soil, we're putting Mother Nature back in that soil through living organisms, that is the beauty of it, and it truly is building soil. I can tell you love it. It's Tommy Cowett with Growing Green. The, uh, their phone number is one eight six six lawn help 
Uh, can you join us next Tuesday? We'll be here to talk some more about uh, some of the things we didn't get to this time. All right. Absolutely. All right. Have a great morning. Laura Ingram is coming up next. I'm Bill Flynn, and we'll see you. AM 980, The Eagle. I'm-